this is, this is, this is. As long as you're comfortable. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how you're comfortable. It's going to be in 110 <laughs> yeah. degree exactly. weather. But. Welcome to Bremerton. Record-breaking heat right now. Um, you're an Englishman, right? You're, I am, very much so. Where are you from originally? Portsmouth. Portsmouth. Oh, my God. Portsmouth so fun. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know how there living there is, but, I mean, there's ah, good fish and right. chips. And well, there's always good fish and chips is it on the, the South Coast. What's the, the, the MS Penafore, or am I screwing that up? There's, there's a bunch of, like, na- like, British Navy Museum ships yeah, you can get on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff. In it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the, the names. There's, like, the yeah. Victory. What's that? It's like the old... I've been Old there. I, ship. I went I, on uh, tour with Goldfinger. I went with uh, Darren Pfeiffer. Yeah. Me and him were tooling around Portsmouth. Yeah, we got to, me and my brother got kicked off that ship. We went to a... Stowaway? Uh, no, it was a <laughs> wedding. We went to a wedding. It was, a mom's, it was like my mum's friend's daughter's wedding. You know, we didn't really know who that person was, really. Right. But me and my brother get there and we get into a bit of mischief. And he's, uh, he's just sort of... He was uh, training to go into the Marines. And he sees the rigging that goes up to the top you know up, right up, you know, at the mast or whatever and he starts climbing up it and yeah the staff come out and he's he's like fucking he's like, like 30 foot up there yeah <laughs> they come out they're like what are you guys doing out here and we're like nothing and then he like looks up at my brother he's all six foot fucking five of him dangling off the rigging so we got yeah we got escorted off that but that was uh that's our that's like the extent of our uh i guess mayhem yeah mar- <laughs> maritime mayhem in, in Ma- coffee yeah. so is your brother older or younger He's older. Older. Yeah, oh, years cool. Older, yeah. He's you know, 35 or something, I think. Was he into punk rock music? No, not really. He's gotten into it a little bit more now. Yeah. Like, his, his older age. It wasn't as cool. Like, I, where I grew up in the little suburb that I grew up, it wasn't really, there was only like a very small handful of kids that were into it or people. Not even kids. I mean, I was, guess I was the youngest. But, uh, you were lucky enough to fall into that group. Yeah, I mean, I found it at a pretty young age. What was the first punk band you, you first found? first band that really uh, struck a chord with me was The Offspring. Offspring? So, Not yeah. The Clash? <laughs> no, no, it was a bit before my time. I was, I was, right. Yeah, so... Uh, okay, yeah, okay. That, you know, and it wasn't, like, something that was, you know, passed down to me through family, because I guess mm-hmm. I was young. I was, like, the first person in my family to even play music, really. Um that's a trip. What, what song? Rock, Can you but, uh, remember the song you heard? I remember hearing Smash, like Smash shortly after it came out. Okay, it must have been a couple of years, but I was young. I was about eight, I guess. And I just remember hearing like something just really resonated with it. I don't know. I think it, it was probably just like the swearing and the you know the distorted guitar or something. And then that you know I, I kind of got into it, but I wasn't you know engrossed in it. And then um, and then Americana came out, and obviously Pretty Fly for a White Guy were like hit like number one or whatever in the UK charts and that was a big thing and then I started actually seeing the band on uh, there was a show called Top of the Pops mm-hmm. it was like a, it was a, it was just you know it was one of them shows where you know whatever artist is big they come into the studio and play and there's like a live audience but I remember seeing they was playing Kids Aren't Alright and I remember seeing it it was more like a visual thing for me other than a like a, you know Actually, like, oh, I like this band. It was like, I was seeing people, like, on stage jumping, you know, jumping into the crowd. Yeah. And, like, really kind of, you know, it was, it was kind of fucking chaos. And I thought, I quite like that. You know, How so old were you? I was about nine. I guess. Nine? Yeah, Are you kidding young. me? Yeah, I was quite young. Very young. But it was cool. It was, and then I was... Uh, wow, I'm blown away right and now. And I was seeing Noodles play guitar, and I was like, I don't know anything about guitar. I didn't grow up in a very musical family, so... But I just, as soon as I saw him playing, you know, with guitar and I saw people jumping off the, off the stage and that was, you know, that was when I was like, I want to do that. I just want to play, like, guitar. I don't, I don't want to necessarily play to be good. I just, like, you know, strap it low and have people jumping off the, you know, jumping off the stage. That was, that was just, it was kind of cool to me. It was something new and it was, like, the first thing, I think, that kind of really just changed my life, essentially. It changed my view on everything and... and Something that was like the first thing I ever fell in love with. Yeah. You know, I was into like skating. I sort of started getting into that as well. And, you know, the two went hand in hand. You know, obviously with like the Tony Hawk Pro Skater. What video is skating game like in out. England? Like, not as in, I mean, it's good. There's some good skaters and it's, it's not as, uh, when, uh, I mean, there was a period when I, got, I think I'm quite lucky that I got into it uh, at just the right time. Now it's kind of died out. It's not as intense. You know, there's not as many, uh, 
you don't see as many kids skating around like you did before. Right. You know, trying to get a skate park built in your local town is just a fucking nightmare because all it takes is one person to complain about a noise complaint or something. So it's <laughs> kind of hard. So we were, we'd, we'd make do with breaking into schools and, and we, it was a lot of like breaking and entry. A lot of young <laughs> It was kind of like a good punk rock, you know. Intro. Yeah. To, to and, uh, you know, you're listening to, you know, your Walkman with your you know, like offspring or Pennywise or like a Rancid they've got into quite a lot. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And then uh, and you guys as well, you know. So it's like listening to that and, and you know, jumping over the fence and to get into a school and skate some sketchy, like, I don't know, two stairs. It wasn't like anything like, came up, well, since I moved out to America, I was like, oh, I understand why the kids are so good. Like, all the skate parks are good. Like, the, the streets are made for skating. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, where I grew up, it's very much like, kind of like here in Bremerton, it's kind of like, the weather the <laughs> not weather's not good. the weather's not great you know what i mean right. so it's kind of weather permitting but then you see these like kids coming out of california that are just cruising around yeah and, you know it, that's venice beach and all that and know. nowadays it seems like every town has a skate park yeah yeah and, and i'm like where was this when i was a kid yeah Come i mean we, we cruised through uh port townsend the other day yeah it's like a sleepy little port town but they got they got like a 20 foot bowl <laughs> Port Towns in Washington. Well, yeah, yeah. Just, and, and then there's the other. We drove through. Uh, we went up to. Where did we go? Like yesterday, we drove up to Hurricane Ridge. Hurricane so, Ridge. Yeah. Uh, what's that town? Squid. No, it's Port Hadlock. Well, there's Hadlock. Squim. There's uh, yeah. there's probably a Port Hadlock. Uh, yeah, there's a Port Townsend, Port Angeles. There's like I can't yeah, remember which one. It's one of the Port Towns. Yeah, there's, I can't remember. There's too many. But yeah, again, like tiny little town. There's no one cruising around on yeah. the streets but like there's a plush you know smooth concrete skate park which is yeah like we didn't get that we didn't grow up really when i was a kid there was i heard of a legendary skate ramp called strawberry hill in oh, yeah. bainbridge island which is like i don't know it's it's 25 minutes from here or something so it's too far when you're a kid right yeah, yeah. and that was a big 12 foot half pipe you know something like that and then that's it and yeah. and, and then nowadays there's a there's a a big uh, cement skate park with a bowl in Port Orchard, Washington, which is 15 minutes from here. Yeah, yeah. Bremerton, East Bremerton has uh, a ramp park. And uh, then Silverdale has a bowl park, which is about 15 minutes from here. And then you go another 10 minutes up to Paul's Bow. Actually, I'm not sure if Paul's Bow has a park, but you go another 10 minutes up to Kingston, Washington. There's a, a park there, a cement park with yeah. a snake. And I'm just like, what? Okay, I'm glad that you kids have all yeah. this, but uh, you know, I feel ripped off. <laughs> not even skating anymore, just cruising around on a scooter. Yeah. Not really caring. That's the reason why kids were so good. You know, when pros were made in the golden era of skating, I guess, like the 90s. Is, uh, right. They had nothing to skate but some, like, fucking rotten old wooden vert in the yeah. middle of Washington that they had to bust out, you know. That's what I did. These I, big I, tricks I, on this death trap. A few different times I sort of, you know, befriended somebody that had a ramp, right? And yeah. Like, oh, hey, can I come over and skate? And I'd come over. I had a, a, this, I knew this dude. His name was Eric in, in Gorst. And he had this mini ramp. It was like a five-foot ramp. That's not really that small, honestly, because I was pretty no, young. That's big when and, you got up there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was a five-foot ramp, you know, and, and I was skating it, having a good time. And at one point, I fell from the top and fell all the way down and landed flat on my arm. So my body f landed on oh, my arm, yeah. on my wrist. And yeah, I was right. like, uh, and I thought I was, you know, I thought, oh, my wrist is broken or whatever. And I drove myself to the hospital. <laughs> I was like, see, you, see you guys, you know, and I drove myself to the hospital, got it checked out. It was just fractured. It was fine. Oh, you know, it, was, it, but that, that's kind of a fun memory of <laughs> Was that the end of hurt. the skating career? Was that the well, that wasn't the end of the skating career, but it was the end of going to that ramp. You know, yeah. so I was like, ah, I wish I would have gone there. Now that I'm thinking about it, there was a ramp in, in East Bremerton going up to, uh, what is it, like for Central Valley. There was this big ramp right off the freeway, and I was a little kid, yeah. and I would just see that thing. It's kind of, uh, you know, bringing this back to music, you know, it's kind of similar to how I got into, like, wanting to play music, too, which was local it's guys visually, around. Yeah. There, there was, like, a, my neighbor was playing... Uh, he was playing drums for this like glam metal band yeah. two two doors down three doors down actually <laughs> and uh they would play talk dirty to me over and over and yeah. i and i'd go and listen outside the garage and it was just like na -na 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 and it sounded great to me you know i'm sure it yeah. sounded terrible 
But oh to yeah, me, at the time you think it's amazing. It yeah, was amazing. Like, it's the best thing. Yeah, and it's going back to that. You know, like the whole getting into the punk rock thing. It was a visual thing. It wasn't necessarily like I want to be a, you know, a, a you know, well-paid musician and learn yeah. to play guitar. It's like no, I just want to be on the stage and have a, a bunch of people like you know going fucking crazy and jumping off the stage now like you know with the style of the music i play now that just wouldn't work yeah but you know, I, you know i've been there and done that you know luckily and, and doing the warp tours and stuff like that which was a huge with my old band that was a huge huge thing so yeah. it's uh although yeah we didn't necessarily make uh you know big money off of it but it was still like the experience of doing that you know to have those little goals that you grow up you know sometimes playing with you know, even just meeting bands and playing alongside, you know, being alongside bands that you grew up listening to, yeah, is like a cool thing. You know, I mean, it's a bit of a trip, especially from being from a small uh, town in England. You know, to to be able to find you know, four guys that want to do the same thing, you know, it's good. You know, so it's, you know. yeah, man, it is good. So tell me about from you know getting into punk rock, Offspring to playing music. What got you? To play, to play, a lot of convincing. That's why my parents get me a guitar, and it was one of those things. Like, because there was no, there wasn't really anyone else in the family that was musical. Yeah, you know, being ten years old, you say you want to play guitar, and then your parents are like, "Oh, you won't." You know, so you, you were don't. ten. I was about that when I wanted one. I, did, I think I got a guitar on my eleventh birthday. Nice. That's my first, yeah, the first guitar I got, and then there was, um, you know, I kind of, you know, I'd sort of pose with it and strut around with it and play along to songs, even though I didn't know how to play them. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have a clue. Uh, and then there was a guy that just would come to our school in the community school and every Tuesday he would just come and do like free guitar lessons for an hour and then I uh, signed it was like me and like maybe you know, two or three other kids that got into it about the same time uh, they didn't really see it through I was just kind of enamoured by it you yeah. know, I enjoyed it and you know learning power chords and learning you know certain things and it wasn't like intense lessons I wouldn't say it was uh you know, I wasn't learning how to shred or anything like that or learning much theory, but it was just like getting to grips with being able to play a guitar. You know? Yeah. And then, um, I don't know, it was young. I think it was, it was just at the right stage. I think I was young enough to get impressionable and just soak up certain things, but I didn't, you know, I kind of looking back on it, you know, obviously as most punk rock guitarists will probably agree that they wish they kind of got into a bit more theory stuff as a, as a <laughs> youngster. But I mean, it, to me, it was like, no, looking cool. It was just like it was a. It looks cool, and I wanted to, you know, just do that. Spike my hair and play, you know, power chords and just and just do that, you know. And uh, over time, I got you know, as you as you get older, you know, influences, and I started picking up the acoustic a lot more, and yeah, started getting into uh, different different artists, a lot of older artists, and you know, I think once I took it seriously, because my mum at first was not really keen on the idea of me getting into, you know, I guess, aggressive punk rock music with lots of swearing, but yeah. over time, so... Against authority. I would, I would have to really convince her to let me go to shows. and I, I was young, I, I get it. I was, like, super fucking young. <laughs> but uh, eventually, you know, I managed to convince her to take me to shows, and there'd be some lo- lo- local shows, mm. you know. And uh, the Wedgwood Rooms in Portsmouth which is you guys yeah, have played there yeah we played there and we, yeah I even managed to convince my mum to take me to an MXPX <laughs> show many years ago it was you guys you guys in the starting line oh yeah and it was me okay. and my friend Mark I met, I met my uh, my friend Mark who was uh, it was like it was like one of those family kind of you get dragged to it was like a New Year's Eve family uh, party and uh, it was like a friend of a friend of my mum's they had like a mutual friend and their son was there and I was wearing like an offspring shirt and he was wearing like a slipknot shirt. We both had like Liberty spikes and we just sort of clock each other from across the room and we're like, we're going to be friends now. That's it. Like, you know, you know the score and he was yeah. in boarding school. So whenever he would come back from boarding school, he'd generally stay at my place or he'd stay at his place and we would find out like what shows were going on in Portsmouth at that time. And my mum was always like the kind of like the volunteer to be like, well, I'll, you know, I'll take them, make sure they're safe. And then really, my mum started really getting into it. So she started getting into the punk bands. Okay. started getting into that. So she started enjoying it. And she still listens to it now. You know, a lot, a lot of these bands that she really gets into. And so that was quite, I think it was nurtured like once it was more understood mm-hmm. by yeah. you know, the parents, I guess. You know, once they understood that it was like it wasn't going anywhere. Like, I'm not going to stop doing this. is like my life. It's just going to shows and skating and, yeah. you know. And, it, like, I wasn't necessarily a bad kid, so it wasn't wasn't much of an issue. But I feel like the initial, because there wasn't, 
I think there was like one neighborhood kid that was like a punk rock guy and he was kind of a fuck up and kind of a little bit crazy. So they were a little bit like, uh, yeah. <laughs> guy, I don't want to turn out like that. But, yeah. you know, and he was in a band as well and was playing like in the garage super loud. But in England, it's like, if you play for any more than like 10 minutes, then the neighbor's going to come out and just like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I feel so like... where do you have to, where do you rehearse in England then? Uh, we, well, my first band, my school band, we would... We, they would let us rehearse in like the drama studio or something in school so even then it wasn't that loud our amps were like the size of this laptop you know <laughs> <These> tiny, <laughs> tiny little unbranded yeah you know trying to play that over a kit and then you know there's rehearsal rooms though like once we started you know my friend Mark who was the guy I started the, the guy that I met at the um, at the party like we started bands together like okay. he was always in the band so you know yeah we were like a unit then they were like okay we're gonna start a band and trying to figure out who was going to sing and I play guitar and I taught him how to play guitar and eventually we went on to, to you know, start my old band The Exposed we, we, we had you know going off and doing warp tours so we had all these like small yeah. dreams as kids to, like you know we're watching all these videos online of warp tour and uh, you know all these bands that we'd look up to and then we you know 10 years later we're, we're finally being able to get out so it was kind of a kind of a trip but yeah like once you start taking it to like like a serious level you know you find somewhere to rehearse and there's there's studios and whatnot but yeah. doing it in, a, in someone's garage like wasn't really an option you know because it all the houses are it's a little bit more of a sleepy kind of town the sleepy country so they, they haven't got much chill for you know someone yeah yeah playing shitty punk rock <laughs> <laughs> i bet yeah, super no, no chill yeah yeah so i gotta ask are you a beatles fan no, not really. Not at all. No, not really. It, again, it's um, it's like one of those. It's a question against the grain thing. No, against do you the know what? It's not even that. It <laughs> it just wasn't like music wasn't. There's a few bands that my mom, I guess, try would try to like get me to listen to, which I'll I'll still listen to now. Um, but Beatles wasn't one of them, really. I mean, I can certainly appreciate it, and I know. What about the Stones? Yeah, again, another one. No, the Who, another one. I'm not no? really that into really. They have they got certain songs that I'll listen to and I like, but yeah, like, yeah. it's like people get really offended, like Zeppelin. I'm like, not really. But then there's certain <laughs> bands that I'm really like Finn Lizzy, like sure, absolutely, okay, hundred percent. Love uh, Finn Lizzy. Yeah. Even like Dad Rock, like Dire Straits to me, like Mark Knopfler was I like one of those Straits. guitarists He's, that I listened to. That's Dad Rock. I guess it. Could I guess it could be. Yeah, there's a lot of jokes about Dire Straits. People, you know, they're amazing. I mean, they're a fucking really, brilliant band. Yeah. yeah. But, like, it was just certain bands resonated. I mean, the biggest one for me, especially transitioning from playing punk rock to doing acoustic stuff and learning how to play acoustic guitar, was uh, Simon and Garfunkel. I got okay. really into that, you know, and, yeah. and, like, harmonies and learning how to Folk harmonize music. with, yeah, yeah. With, you know, and, and play, the, you know, the finger-picking style and do, you know, just just open my mind to a different dynamic. And there's there's a lot of bands I'm into, but a lot of the time it's, you know, like people say about the Beatles, I, I can certainly appreciate it, but I'm just, it just wasn't my era for a yeah. start. You know, I was, I was born, oh God, well, uh, like I, I, 30 I've or 40 years yeah. after the Beatles broke up. So like, yeah. I, I don't really, I can get it, it but it wasn't my thing. And, and, and it's the same now, you know, like you can't get mad if someone, you know, if, you know, if some American kid doesn't like, I don't know, like Van Halen. Sure. Like what? Not just because your dad liked it or something. Right, you know of I mean? course. But, you know, music style changes. And I, like I said, I didn't grow up in a particularly, like, musical family necessarily. But, um, yeah, so that was not... Yeah, Beatles wasn't really yeah. something that kind of really got, got, I got into. I've got no desire to, like, play a Beatles song or yeah. anything. But, like, I got into different stuff, especially more of the American stuff. I, I mean, I think I grew up... My infatuation with music was, you know, like the Orange County, like, Southern California punk rock scene. Yeah. So you get in that mindset of like, yeah, just just want to listen to this, just want to listen to punk rock. I got into some other bands, got into Metallica quite a lot, and some. Metal. Everybody has a Metallica phase, right? Yeah, I mean, I still <laughs> like it, you know, especially yeah. up, uh, more the early stuff. Black Album was a, a fantastic oh, record. Oh, absolutely, and yeah. I love playing that. Car. I still like playing kind of like thrashy stuff on guitar because it's fun. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm not particularly. What great did you say? It, but what like, What do you call that? Like thrash, like thrash, Fra yeah, thrash, yeah, thrash. Okay. I say everything with an F. Yeah, so this is going to be a... Thrashy stuff. Yeah. You might have to have subtitles on this... Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. You might have to have subtitles on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we'll That's what Cora was saying. She's like, speak speak clear. Speak clearly yeah. into the microphone. Yeah. What about Oasis? Oasis? No, it's a band I didn't like. I think what it was with Oasis, it was more... I was... 
I didn't like the fans. The like, fans. Uh, what what you are you the were, fans like? In, oh, you know, they're just kidding. You know, back in the day, it was if you were into punk rock music, you were technically classed as, a, I guess, a grunger in England. They were called oh. a grunger or whatever. <laughs> and uh, generally, they were like Oasis fans, you know? Yeah. Or, or you know, into that music. But You're a grunger. Older. Like, yeah, they wrote some good songs. I think they're all right. Like, I don't think it's terrible. You know, yeah, I'm not no. like a fan per se. They've got some tunes. I can understand why, you know, like Wonderwall got as big as it did. It's a sure, great, great sure. song, well written song. But yeah, but again, it's like, I think there's something in the back of my brain, some residual, like, I don't like you know, that kind of. I think it was an age thing. They're being ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. yeah and it's <laughs> what about drama Blur? Behind what it, about Blur? Blur? Blur was quite fun. I learned that. I went to another guitar. I, I did like probably about five months of like proper guitar lessons with a fantastic guitar player in England and he was teaching me a lot of stuff and the song too by Blur was yeah, you good. know because you think it's going to be that, that main riff you think it's all guitar and you think it's all heavy but it's actually like it's just an octave on the 12th fret that he's playing and then the bass is actually doing the right. that, yeah, that riff to that so you're like bomb. Song. You're like, I want to play that. Yeah, I want to do the dun dun oh. dun 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 dun, <laughs> and that's only the intro. And then the rest of it's just <laughs> that little <laughs> twiddly, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh yeah. But it's, you know, I learned a lot for you know just for certain bands, and I feel like having a you know a vast um, eclectic taste certainly helps. Yeah. As a, as yeah, as an artist. Yeah. I like the finger picking you're doing on the new record. By the way, we'll talk about. We should talk about the new record. I mean, yeah. you, you've been doing. Americana and this new record isn't I wouldn't say it's Americana it's got Americana in it but it's a solo right yeah. it's like a singer songwriter record right or am I wrong yeah you know, it's I'm, not I'm, as Americana still, as the last yeah. record right but uh no I mean the last the first record I did the first EP I did I mean I've only been doing this for like six years like solo solo stuff. And Sim Williams, oh, well, yeah. so, solo and I was you know I was in the exposed before for, for you know almost a decade and Took a couple of years off. Now I was, I've always been infatuated with, you know, trying to play, uh, do solo stuff. But I was never a songwriter for the old band. I was always just a guitar player, so I wasn't a songwriter. Um, so so you you struck like about, off on about, your own. Yeah, about six years ago, I just tried to you know write a few songs and, and was playing acoustic guitar a lot and picked up a harmonica. I wanted to learn Heart of Gold by Neil Young on harmonica. <laughs> okay. So I was like, I went on YouTube and found out what key it was in. So I just went and bought this like $5 Fender harmonica and the little harmonica holder. And, uh, you know, when you, when you play it in key, you're like, oh, shit, I can play anything in this key. Mm-hmm. And it sounded okay. So then I, um, I think that opened up a lot. I was like, I can do like a one-man band kind of thing. Yeah. So then um, I started just putting some words together and I didn't know. It was, it was intimidating. I mean, I've helped out with certain lyrics before, but nothing... You know, I, was, I wasn't writing like an entire chorus or melody or anything really. I was just helping out with a few things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the, the, you know, the concept of writing a full song was kind of daunting. But, you know, I, I wrote like four tracks. How did you approach it? I just, I don't know. I just sat down with a guitar and just... Because you knew how to play, so you're like, oh, yeah, well, I, I know these the, chords. I had the melody. I know what melody. I want. Yeah, in my head, I kind of know. I kind of mumble right. That's the, okay. I guess that's the way I yeah. say it is like, I'll pray a song and I'll just mumble under my breath you know, kind of what melody I want. And then I might get like a chorus and I'll still do that now. Like I might get like a chorus and then the chorus is going to be the main thing that, you know, that to me, that's the most important thing. Obviously having the hook, you know, if a song bores me, if I'm halfway through a song writing it and it bores me, I'll generally don't finish it. Right. or I'll leave it. I'm the you know. same, kind of the same way, yeah. actually. Yeah, I've got a lot of half ideas. Yeah. And, part and then of. you can take something from that song the then one good part, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Can take the chorus. I love the chorus, but I don't like the. Yeah. You know, I don't like that. Even with a couple of songs off the last record, I did that, and they would play them live a couple of times. And you're like, this is fucking boring. I can't, I can't finish this. But it's, um, yeah. So I just I released that first record, which was a little bit more like I guess like Americana y or country esque. I like it. I like um, it all though. I mean, I you know, yeah. You can't do. You evolve and you change, and, and the fact that you've only been writing songs for like six years—that's yeah. Uh, it's it's been pretty consistent. It's been pretty nonstop. Yeah. I kind of beat myself up about it, you know. No. When I went the first went into it, I was like, "Well, I'll release a, yeah. an album a year and then keep writing." But then you realize that that's even hard. just the the whole process of producing the mix and mastering an album takes a mm-hmm. long time. And I came out, did the second record, Broken Bones, which was uh, down in same as uh, same place I recorded. Uh, the latest record 
um, at Straight Jacket Studios in Fullerton. Okay, Fullerton, uh, California. Yeah. Nice. And there's uh, my friend Jay Stolo. He's, uh, he runs that studio. The first record, um, Broken Bones, the first full length, was uh, we had Trevor Jackson producing, like co-producing with that as well. Trev, um, what's up? But I was still living in England at the time, so I came out. Okay. Kind of like just spent like a month out here. So how long have you been in the U.S.? Uh, full time, it'll be, it'll be four years this year. Four years. Yeah. Cool. November. Rad, years, dude. Yeah. But it's been a, it's been a lot. It's been. I mean, there's a lot's happened. I, I'm, I kind of, it's happened so fast as well that, you know, like two records later, and, you know, we've moved and and, you know, traveling just generally traveling around America to see family and stuff like that, like the reason why we're here it's a, yeah. it's a lot that's you know but then sometimes when i get those down times those those moments where you you've got time to think you kind of beat yourself up about it and you're like i should be more productive i should be doing this should be doing that and i have to sort of kind of sit back and think well the last six years has been pretty fucking busy yeah you know, like emigrating and absolutely all that shit and, yeah yeah i mean uh, we all us as songwriters as artists or as as people everybody listening even everybody's hard on themselves you know yeah, I, I feel like i'm never working hard enough i'm never getting enough done and it's just like ugh. that's ridiculous no, i mean seeing how much you work i mean we can uh, see that evidently on the uh, on social media and before your live streams and your podcasts i mean you do like a podcast a week i do that's yeah fucking busy man it and is it's good like it's like good quality Thank you. Sure. I appreciate it. Thanks for being on, get, by the way. Like me Thanks for there. being on, man. It's <laughs> great. It's great to have no, you. you know? Oh, I mean, the America, you know, bring the Americana thing up. I love, I love country, but I love the Americana style and the folk sort of punk. Yeah. I don't know. Infusion. Yeah. Whatever that is. Cause I, you know, I love all those styles of music, but, um, so I, I naturally really enjoy a lot of the songs you put out oh, that the, uh, white of the eyes. That's the new record. Yeah. Um, thank you. For those on YouTube, might as well put this up. This is the the cover right here, but uh, it's cool, man. It it sounds really good. How hard is it to put together a full band record it's when you not, as a solo artist? It's I mean, actually, I mean, I'm pretty lucky. I've got you know a great group of mates that I've known now for a long time. Um, so you kind of have a a, there's a, band. a go-to yeah, group I, of so a I band. In, I record in Fullerton. Okay. I have Derek Envy on bass. Yeah, Derek. You know, Derek, that? like he's you know, in he's been he's in great. Thousands of bands, and I've, I've, I met him on the Warp Tour 2011. So we've, we we got like a you know pretty long friendship. He was playing with uh, Unwritten Law. Um, he's now playing for like Red City Radio, and he's you know he he's played bass for like plenty yeah. of people. And yeah. He's a fantastic bass player. Um, so he did the last he did this one and, and the last record, Broken Bones. Um, and I've got a drummer, uh, Nate Walker, who was, I met Nate, I was doing merch for Lit, the band back in the UK, and Nate was playing drums for them at the time. Um, and we just became friends. And Lit know. is a band back in the UK, not the Lit from... No, the this, that's just this Lit. Yeah, this Lit, did, okay. did, This was back in... This but you meant, okay, I yeah, get it, yeah, I get it. So you meant in, in the UK on yeah, a tour. Yeah, I was okay. doing merch for them <laughs> and... Uh, Cause I know, yeah, that's right. You, you you've done merch I've and, done and, and yeah, a lot I did, of like I did the show actually. I did the Screeching Weasel show. Yeah, that's when right. When you did that, yeah, Trevor like got me out. You know, that's whoever, right. whoever Trevor was working for, I would generally Thank go you. out and do that, especially Excellent. in the UK. But yeah, so he's he's a drummer like Nate, and he's um, you know, he's he's up in Orange County. Okay. Know. And there's a new artist on there that I've started working with, who was uh, Matt Baxter, who is a singer songwriter and you know just a multi instrumentalist. Yeah. Great guy. And because uh, that studio is kind of like a hangout hub for all sorts of artists that come in, and Jay will, you know, we'll record a song, I'll leave, and then Jay will, you know, have this guy come in. He'd be like, "This guy's can sing harmonies like no problem." It's like, so he's going to sing the harmonies on your, on your, you know, these songs. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, yeah, right. he's good, he's good, it's fine. If we don't like it, we take it out. But um, yeah. so then, yeah, Matt comes in, you know, and meet him, and. Uh, just a great hit it off straight away and he's great on guitar brilliant you know he sings harmonies on it you know he did, he did all the he did all the harmonies he did lead guitar on a, on a couple of tracks as well there and slide guitar but it's yeah it's a pretty small unit i mean i did most of the i do most of the guitars and see the songwriting but you know i can the first record i did i played bass on which was okay but it's not a true i'm not a bass player you know i'm a guitarist that can play bass yeah yeah so I hear you. 
I uh, so having Derek come in and he can you know he knows if the song needs to be played you know f- you know finger picking or whether he needs to sure. you know, rumble through it and he's just you know and it's always a good hang you know what I mean it's just like we're in a studio it's not just like work it's like it's good yeah Nate's just a very intelligent drummer Nate's the first guy that I send the songs to I generally record a pretty crude shitty version of uh, the song uh, uh, you know just acoustic on uh, garage band mm-hmm. with some shitty little mic and I'll send it to Nate and I'll say like you know, do what you can over this and he'll take what I sent and he'll um, you know do his drum parts over yeah. it. and sometimes he'll come back with something that I wasn't even thinking would fit you know there's a couple of, couple of songs on that record that I'm you know I owe a lot to even just like you know the drummer and bassist that made it what it was you know it's not just a case of like I don't write stuff and you know, that's how it has to be. Mm-hmm. I'm not that militant with it, you know. I'm yeah. kind of relaxed. I want it to be, f- I want everyone to be having a good time. And, you know, it's the same with being in any band, really. And I think, yeah, you know, I took that from my old band. We were always got, we were always best mates. And we are, yeah. we still are. That's good. But, you know, it was, you know, sometimes you go on the road and you see bands like <laughs> beating the fuck out of each other or hating each other. And, and it's, it's kind of sad. I mean, I get it sometimes, but, you know, clash of personalities. But, I mean, I'm pretty fortunate to be always be playing with people that are good and that's good I feel like yeah. if you know if there's any tension I don't like that like in a you know in a studio I want everyone to get on and have a good time and mm-hmm. same as when you're playing a show like you don't want that one guy to turn up that's just being a dick and you know I've got no tolerance for it mainly so yeah absolutely. yeah I just want it to all be fun and hang out and have a good time this is it's the reason I got into it in the first place really it wasn't the money it wasn't anything anything like that just just fun. So, uh, do you self-release the records? You yeah, self-releasing. Yeah, it's all independent. Everything. Cool. Yeah. So you're you're the record label and the artist. Yeah, well, the just the work. artist really. I, mean, I don't know how record label works. Well, but, uh, but you know, you're, you, I just release it. I did a, I did sure. a Kickstarter campaign for this for this one to you know to, to mainly get vinyl pressed because vinyl is yeah. expensive as Absolutely. you know, and um, it's a bit of a process. So I like to, and it also I feel like it keeps people interested again. I'm you know yeah again I could be more active on social media about. You know, a lot of this stuff and but you know sometimes you just get exhausted you know, that, like this whole process took a long time yeah yeah know? absolutely but it's uh yeah self-release i mean i but it also gives me a lot more freedom to do I, kind I, of what i want yeah absolutely i love self-releasing and yeah. yeah obviously if if you're self-releasing what i meant by you're the record label is there's no oh yeah there's no middleman no, it's no, no middleman it's just you you just me yeah you get it's, the, it's great. All the royalties I mean, it's, and yeah. yeah it's good you know it's it's <laughs> It's a lot of fun. So it's, it's a challenge sometimes, yeah. but it is. you know, I, I have a hard time if, so, if you know if someone was breathing down my neck about something. I think I'd have a hard time with that, especially. Yeah. If it's hard with labels, you know. You never know if they're going to rip you off or not. So right. Yeah, you know, I don't think I'd, I'd have to chill for that. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's. I mean, these days it's definitely changed a lot because yeah. the whole dynamic is is a little different. But back in the day, you can pretty much guarantee you're getting ripped off. <laughs> I mean, and just oh, yeah. get, I mean, yeah. just the way contracts were written, the way the normal music business was yeah. now there wasn't as much access to like find out about yeah. these things you know now you yeah. can go on social media and you can read you know a whole story you know all it takes is one band to post a you know an instagram post about how they've been ripped off and, and what it yes. is and that kind of clues you know these younger kids up a little bit yeah you yeah. know to to understand what it is that you know i feel like we got in just at the right time my old band especially we still had that kind of old school mentality of like just getting the van and going tour and mm-hmm. self-release but and then we, you know, we kind of looked at certain labels but we also were just at the right time when the social media thing was kicking off so we could research um, things a little bit more yeah you know? so yeah. We, you know we had access to like oh this band got ripped off by this person and, you know and it, it's, it's a very kind of um, candid you know world the social yeah. media and it's it's good and, you know, in many ways it's good some ways it's not so good if you want to know everything you can or yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you yeah. should want to know everything but yeah. yeah you can just like go online and read all this craziness and it's like oh sometimes I just don't want to know you know but yeah I'm talking about in, in general just like yeah. politics and oh yeah I've all the craziness I'm not as active and I just can't how's the last couple of years been like for you like with I mean, with the lockdowns and now we're, it lockdowns. seems to be coming out of it is it it's not be bad I mean we live okay up in the mountains so we're here in our little, yeah. little spot up, here, up in uh, if up anything in it makes California. you 
Makes you appreciate what you have. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we've always been busy. Yeah. So. And um, musically, it's been nice to kind of take a little break to not just... I feel like I could get in that rut because I'm doing the self-promotion thing. and mm-hmm. can get in that rut of just, you know, being a yes man and, and saying yes to all these shows and driving down to San Diego to play a show and then mm-hmm. the promoter does a runner and you don't get paid or something stupid like that. So it's been... It's given me time to sit there and realise, you know, what it is that I should should be doing and, and what I want to be doing. And, mm-hmm. You know, we, we, uh, we're in a nice spot. Say we're up in the mountains with many people. Yeah. Luckily for me, like, I'm not the most kind of like the biggest social butterfly so I don't really care to like it didn't you know affect me that much to, to not be around a bunch yeah. of people and so what do you think you're going to do changing maybe going forward with live shows because I'm sure you'll play but yeah 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 playing um, be a little just, more just thoughtful being, what? yeah just being more thoughtful yeah. and trying to you know get I mean it's it, 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 you know there's, there's a bit of a roadblock because I am fully self-sufficient with this mm-hmm. and self-funded and whatnot, but it's, um, you know, I think just trying to get on, you know, because before lockdown hit, you know, I started doing some bigger opening slots, mm-hmm. you know, to the bigger rooms and the, you know, the, the, the proper venues. And and it, and that was like a, you know, a glimmer of hope, you know. The, yeah, like it's going like, somewhere. Like, yeah, we're doing some of these good shows. You know, yeah. It's this packed room and, and I do well with a packed room. That's like my kind of what I enjoy and I can feed <laughs> off it. You know, I enjoy yeah. it and... Uh, and then lockdown hit and then you know there was nothing and now you know I don't know I don't know what's gonna be ahead you know, I would want to do some um, I'd like to do a live stream show I'd like to do one of those live stream shows playing with the full band yeah because although the full band's on the record and we record together and and whatnot, we don't we haven't played live you know with, the, with this current lineup, we haven't played live mm. so It'd be cool to maybe do that and just speak to those guys and see if they'd be up for doing maybe a you know a live stream in the studio or something. And but you know, it's in the small little mountain town where I'm at. There's a lot of the the local venues are kind of asking me to come and play and and whatnot. But yeah, what well, kind of what happened before the lockdown is a lot of it actually ended up like more pressure on me. Like I was bringing artists, like touring artists, friends that were you know because we're in the perfect spot between like LA and Bakersfield. Where are you at? Uh, it's a town called Pine Mountain Club. Like right, it's up in like Fraser Park. Yeah, you won't know. Yeah, I wouldn't know. <laughs> Tiny little mountain. We're like 6,000 foot up in the, right up in the mountains. And it's great. It's, it's, it's great for us. But there's a couple of little little spots in there. There's a couple of little, uh, there's a little coffee shop and a couple of little bars there you can play. Mm-hmm. You know, you can do like 30 or 40 seater rooms and you can pack them out. It's, it's pretty good. And we started doing that. And I was putting on shows and, you know, getting my friends to come up and play and, you know, touring artists that, to do those secret shows or whatever and mm-hmm. it started getting good then lockdown hit and yeah. you know, a bunch of political shit happened and a lot of things it's such a small town you know gets divided you know when that kind of kind of stuff happens and so it's going to take a little while so I'm trying to you know I'm, I'm getting asked to play up there again but yeah I don't know yeah maybe yeah I'll take my time with it I, I like I'm that sure. man I, I think patience is is important especially mm. right here with, with artists yeah. and I mean, if anybody's comfortable, go for it. Do some shows, but um, it's not—it's not the COVID thing that I'm—I'm I'm worried about with shows. It's the the unknown, like the liability. That's like, okay, if we work with this venue, what's going to happen? You know? Yeah. So, is it going to be half full? Like, that's the thing. Like, yeah. Like I said, like I love the full huh. room. Yeah. Like it, it's kind of weird. Like I don't know if I want to play. I don't want to play a twenty five percent capacity. Stack, you know, staggered crowd. Yeah. Like it's just kind of a bit of a bummer, isn't it? Like, yeah. Yeah, you might get paid the same. Maybe I don't know. You probably won't know because obviously because of the ticket sales. Ex- like, so it's tickets. Well, tickets cost probably more these days. Um, plane yeah. tickets cost more. Gas cost well. Gas costs a lot right now, but it costs a lot three years ago too. Yeah. But so um, you know, but just everything seems to be going up, right? So the expenses oh, for yeah. bands to travel and artists to travel, hotels, all of that. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's going to be, I don't know, thirty percent more or something like that. Yeah. That's, and that's probably being conservative. Yeah, and just play into a, you know, like you say, like a 25-cat room. Yeah. You know? So, eh, you know, there's a lot there. And that doesn't mean we're not going to do shows, but nah. we just got to do the right shows. And, and Yeah, I think, like, now yeah. it's, it's, you know, I feel like there's this, you know, there's this big surge of people like, yeah, we're back to normal, we're back to normal. But there yeah. is still something, you know, there is still yeah. kind of a pandemic. And, 
it's it is difficult. Do you want to be the person that just you know? Do you want to fly out to Florida and do Florida and Texas and do <laughs> you know ten dates to pack rooms? Or, I don't know. You know or, what I mean? Yeah. I would love to. You know, I'd love to be able to do that, but you know, the level I'm at, it's just not worth it. It's not you know financially worth it. So Snoop Dogg is coming to Waco. Oh yeah. Like there's a bunch of bigger acts coming to Waco, whereas <laughs> normally it's. You know, there's a few that come every now and oh, then, yeah. but it's, it, it's they're just po- they're just finding the points on the map. They're like, oh, listen, yeah, they'll take us. Yeah, they'll take uh, us. They'll take us. We'll go there. But yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's 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 I don't know. I, I, I mean, it's still so up in the air. I'm, I'm not yeah. sure. You know, that's the that's the main thing, isn't it? I'm just gonna keep working, keep doing what I'm doing, and and yeah. when it's time, it's time, and it'll be good. But yeah, I mean, you guys have killed it with the you know, with the live streams yeah live streams have been amazing they're definitely going to continue um you know as the years go by they probably will change over time and and all that but i don't think live streams are going away um i was just talking to we just came from yuri's yeah i was talking to yuri about it um just telling him how like your setup is like the best live stream setup that i've seen just saying it because you're here but like thank you you know a lot of these you know there's a lot of bands that do these big stadiums and these big festivals you know, yeah they're doing these kind of uh, theaters and, and whatnot and it's um and it seems like it's not actually live well because in between <laughs> songs there's no there's nothing there's no crowd like, yeah in between your songs it's like you're rehearsing so you're like talking shit and doing yeah out. and it's panning round and it's not like you're not up there on a stage with all this light in it's you know i feel like I think that keeps people interested. And I feel like, obviously, because you guys have been around for a long time, you can dig into those old tracks and pull out the, pull out the good stuff. And the deep uh, tracks have been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep people interested. And I thought, like, you know, it's, it, you know, it's going to keep people, it's, it's like their, like, monthly routine. Like, you know, MXPX is playing again. Let's go and watch it. And yeah, it's been it's so good, much yeah. fun. I mean, it's loyal fan base. You it's know been a mean? challenge to learn songs and to, yeah. but it's been really cool for, just to see Tom be, come into practice and be like into like this song. Let's play this song because you know, I've been listening to it in the car and I want to like you know get into it. Yeah, it's fun for me to see that because you know Tom's a smart ass all the time and and no. he's usually like ah whatever this and that. <laughs> but you know to see him generally like kind of into getting excited again. doing some of these songs has yeah. been cool. And he always loves doing new songs too. Everybody yeah. always loves doing new songs, of course. But yeah, no, I mean it's. it's Seems like it's worked. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's one good. thing that I I couldn't. I had a bit of a hard time with getting into the live stream because for me it's just like a you know it's just an iPhone and playing in, at home and yeah, we have like fucking dogs barking in the background or something. Sure. And it's uh, you know it's it's it was hard sometimes. I felt like I was forcing myself to try and do it, and and uh, you know it's hard for me because you know I've got half a, half a fan base back in England mm-hmm. and half over here. Um, and it's hard to sort of coordinate the right time. Sure. Like what time do I do? Do it I do it hard. at 12 o'clock on a Saturday US time so that, you know, the, the folks back in England can, can yeah. watch it at 8 p.m.? So it's like, what do yeah, I do? Like, I'm going to get no one on this side, people on that side, and I'm not going to get anyone on that side if I do it too late. So it's kind of... Mm-hmm. And it's not, you know, I, I'm not the sort of guy that necessarily I don't always like sit at home and like play my own songs and sing sing my heart out every time I play I like to just like noodle around finger mm-hmm. pick and you know just sort of dick about you know I generally tend to rehearse more if I know I've got something coming up it's yeah. hard to rehearse for a, a live stream I think because yeah. you don't it's not the same happen, as yeah. like a show and I'm glad that I'm I'm rehearsing with the band and makes you know the yeah, whole yeah, of yeah. the guys but because back last year when I was doing a ton of live streams, acoustic, man, it was like, I wouldn't say it's like a job. I mean, of course, this it's is my job. It's because you can't, there's no, there's no, <laughs> you can't mess up on it. Yeah. You know, you know, and no matter how I much you rehearse it, it, all it takes is that one. The one screw up. up. Yeah. Know. So like I would rehearse and I would, I would go over the songs, but there's only so much you can do. And then you got to just do the show. You just, I mean, because the show is going to be different than rehearsal every time. Yeah. It's just a different feeling. Do you get a feeling? Do you get like a, a whatever it is? It could, it's different for everybody, but like almost nervous energy, some sort of uh, anxious energy. It could be a positive anxious energy. It could be on the negative side if you have negative thoughts. I don't, I don't know. Do you have any show? of that for before a live, like before uh, and during? Yeah, I mean, it depends. I think it's more during. Like during? If I, if I, 
Like if you screw up and there's a full solo crowd, yeah. I mean, because I, I generally play. Although the, for the records are all uh, largely full band, yeah. I play solo, yeah. You know, like ninety eight percent of the time, right? Um, it depends. It's I have to totally go into a different place, and shut off, and um, you know, I, I'm, you know, I can. I'm pretty good if someone's talking or someone's being a smart ass, and I, I'm pretty good at calling that out. And I've not really had to I've not had like any of those breakdowns you see when people kind of have on stage yeah. um, well, it's during the during the set I'm like playing and it was more early on because it's still fairly new yeah. and sometimes I'd forget words it's weird so like no matter how much I rehearse it yeah I'd forget the words mainly to actually it's like a it's yeah. like a brain fart yeah I don't know if you know that term yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. where you're like I know it but yeah. I still screw it up. In so that. what I would do generally in that situation, I would just play, keep playing the guitar, and I would just talk into the mic and be like, yeah, sorry, I've just forgotten the fucking words. It'll come to me in a second. <laughs> and then people that. start laughing, you know, and then you start kind of <laughs> playing into it a little bit because people are like, sure. oh, this is funny. I can get on board with this. Most you people know? wouldn't wouldn't know that you screwed up, though. No, a lot of you people You could just don't. keep uh, playing acoustic, you know, like, this is, I'm changing yeah. this song, people. <laughs> there was a couple of times I'd play and I would... You know, I'd mess up and I'd be like, oh, that was a big part. And I've realized that no one knows the fucking songs anyway. Right. So I'm like, why, why would they care? And I'd come off, you know, I'd come off and I'd talk to a, a, you know, a friend, even a friend that's you know, heard the songs or a friend I'd be touring with. And they'd be like, I didn't even hear it. I didn't even know what. Yeah. Now it was either you weren't paying attention at all or, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not nerves, not really. Like, I enjoy it. Okay, I, I really enjoy the bigger shows and the bigger the better. You know, the, that crowd, it's, it's that good energy you feed off. But like halfway through a song, sometimes if I let my brain sort of go down that route to like yeah. overthinking, and I'm start like something's coming up, and I'm like, oh shit! But like the last show, I did this one little show on the mountain where we are, and uh, I played a lot of the new material because I haven't played a lot of it since since COVID. Some of it was written, you know, during COVID mm-hmm. times. I haven't played it live, and uh, you know, I did a live stream. It was one of those rough mornings, you know. It was a, I was in the Pine Mountains or the pollens here in so like mm-hmm. I've got this my throat's all dried up so I'm drinking Fireball you know, it was an early show it was like you know, 12 you know, 12 30 or something and I'm up on this deck you know in this little coffee shop 10 foot above everyone in this parking lot and and I'm, I'm uh, you know I'm playing one of the new songs on the record and I did the live stream of the show and I didn't realise it at the time but I actually missed a bridge and the last chorus of that song. It was a song I opened with. And then I just, I did the, like, you know, the chorus before, uh, before the bridge and just totally, but I didn't even, I didn't even register. Mm. I was like, okay, you know, whatever. And um, listening back to it, I was like, I missed the whole fucking part of the song. I don't know whether it was like, but at least you didn't so, register. Cause it, no, but it was, it, it flowed in so well. Yeah. But it just seemed like a very short song. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, I used it was uh, yeah. Sometimes those those slip ups happen. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, no matter how much you rehearse it, but like sometimes my brain can of course go, and I feel like it just happens. taking you know just having a few drinks. That's why like if I can you know, if the crowd's engaged and I can feed off that, mm-hmm. like if I can see people just like floating around and yeah. shit, then I'm just like uh, you know, I don't know. It, it doesn't happen as often as it did, but yeah. it's it's pretty good. It's still fairly new to me, like playing solo, but sure, I, think I do all right for the most part. Like, and luckily, it's not happens during any of those bigger shows yeah good i I would would say just you know everything you're saying consider yourself lucky i used to have pretty 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 good anxiety you know before a solo show it's different than mxpx and then when i started doing more solo shows and getting nervous then i started getting nervous for mxpx shows i was like what yeah there's no balance there yeah i was like wait a second No, no 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 i mean not as nervous but uh and i i don't and i i'm pretty good now actually but um I was listening to Seth Godin talk. He's an author okay. guy, kind of blogger. But he was saying that anxiety and when you feel nervous before a performance, things like that, unless you have a legit like medical thing or whatever, but um, yeah. it's it's like failing in, in in advance. Yeah, he described it as failing in advance. And and you're already anticipating the worst. Yeah, you're anticipating the worst. You're you're like, and it's like, okay, so what's going to happen if you fail? you're going to shake it off and, or it happens, it happens and you move on. Right. Yeah. And it's like, so like he- hearing him describe, you know, you're failing in advance. It doesn't do any good for you or anybody else for you to fail in yeah. advance. And it's such a simple thing, literally, but hearing that actually 
made me not be anxious anymore. Yeah. It's so weird. So I hope that helps somebody else out. Little word of wisdom. Yeah. 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 It really helped. And I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. There's no, no reason. So now what I do is I, I focus on, I just intensely try to focus on what I'm doing. And that's not always easy. You like you're saying, you you can look around at the crowd or, you know, be thinking about something else and then you screw up a part. But I I found that like if there's something I'm worried about, something that I'm not like I haven't done hundreds and hundreds of times, I just focus, focus. Of course, you have to rehearse beforehand, but focus on it every second. of Like I was given a speech. (laughs) I was doing like stories and stuff during one of my shows and I was just like it's so hard because you lose focus so easy. Like I do anyway. It's, it's a Jerry Seinfeld talks about how that's probably like the number one thing that he does when he rehearses or, or he focuses on his act. Yeah. So whatever it is for you, whatever it is for me and whatever it is for Jerry Seinfeld, like just focus on it as you go through it. Yeah. That's pretty intense. It's like an intense, like mental yeah. Exercise. It's like right now. We're doing this podcast. My phone's just died. And we're doing wow. The, we're doing the Skype thing. And now I, I noticed it. Oh. I noticed it. Well, uh, the, you know, it's hot. It's, it's almost not. been an hour. Let's, uh, it's, uh, let's wrap it up. Yeah. yeah. Want to do the, uh, I guess I, I'll just turn around my computer and film you doing the acoustic song. Yeah. What are you going to sing? What are you going to do? Uh, Cannonball. Cannonball off yeah. the new record. Yeah, Excellent. there's two two uh, two versions of it. We've got the full the full band version, which is uh, the video is actually going to be out today. Nice. And, okay. Um, so by the time this comes out, it's yep. out. Yep. We'll That's put, how it comes out. This, we we coincided it to you know to that. Cool. And um, then there's the acoustic version, which I'm going to do now. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Let's flip it over. All right.
sink as low Will I 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 sink as low Sunk as low as I can go Dude, thanks for doing it. That's hot. Thank you. Thanks for being on. Sim Williams, everybody. Thank you, sir. Go check out the new record, Whites of the Eyes. And, uh, dude, thanks for doing it. It is so hot in here. Let's get out of here. Yeah. All right. Hottest day in Bremerton. Yep, it is. Well, <laughs> tomorrow we'll be, and then the next day oh, we'll be. <laughs> shit, man. No, thanks awesome. for having me on, mate. I really appreciate it.